Good evening. Welcome to yet another Raw Wednesday. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And if you've watched a few of these by now, I'm surprised that you're still tuning in because I can imagine they're quite boring. There might be a level of informative there with uh, playing around with Capture One, but um, on the whole, I'd say pretty boring. But thanks for watching still. If you do watch regularly, let me know down in the comments because kudos to you well done let's start with talking about the previous challenge the macro challenge where i was at the cliffs of moa remember moa i'm gonna run her over with a moa that's how it's pronounced and i took this picture here which was uh if you remember, there was a, a slate kind of wall fence running along the uh, top of the cliff where, you know, to stop people falling over or off the edge rather than over, well, over or off. Same difference, semantics. Um, and in the slate was some lovely kind of um, almost fossilizations or I don't know if it's a process of uh, the slate, slate being created, I don't know, but looked really cool. So I took a picture and this was it. And I got my, well, I had my 400mm lens on already, so I was just like, I'll use that. Uh, put some macro extension tubes in there so I could really focus close. And this is what I came away with. Um, I don't really know what to say about it. It's, it's just a really close up picture of a bit of slate um it's got some nice kind of texture going in there and i like the kind of fact that it's very kind of uh a monotone gray scale uh look and i went with a one by one crop as well um because i thought that best fitted it so that was my attempt um now we've got two other entries one i think they're both from the same person and there's no reason why you can't put two in or more uh, yet again, Lucy Lens and Gems. She's, I really like this one. Uh, Lucy's got a very kind of dark tone and vibe to her pictures, and this comes through with this one particularly, with the water on the glass. She's got really up close, taken on her phone as well. So, just shows you can use any camera to do a lot of really good photography, and this is really cool. Up close, we get some reflections in some of these water droplets down the bottom. A bit lighter here and then a darker area at the top here. Some really nice kind of, um, again, it's got that monotone gray scale, black and white look, which is really cool. Um, yeah, really like that one, Lucy, well done. And let's look at the other one. Oh, it's not Lucy. This is, uh, sorry, I got mixed up. <laughs> this is Yubu Hack 123. I don't know if that's how you would like it pronounced, but um, that is how I'm pronouncing it. So, well done. Thanks for entering. Real close up of a flower here. And you've got some water droplets on the petals, which is really cool. I can really see the detail in the flower there. And it really nice contrasting, really hot kind of purple with the white cream of the petal. Really nice and contrasting. Colours really pop. It's really nice details. The water really adds to it. So really nice, really nice attempt. So thank you both for having a go and entering. And uh, from now on, we we'll have more time to experiment, have a go, put multiple entries in, I do not mind. Um, and we'll see how we can all kind of have goes and learn from each other. I'm really enjoying these challenges, really helping me push, push myself in different avenues, learn about new techniques, it's a bit like macro, never touched it really before. So we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll be doing macro again in the challenge at some point in the future and then we have longer to have experiment and have a go with it anyway let's get into the pictures from 
Monday's photo on location vlog and I was down at Kalani National Park again this time I didn't have to climb a mountain I had to walk about 30 seconds if that to this beautiful spot on the edge of the, lo the lock or the lake I can't decide what to call it I'm gonna go with lock because most bodies of water in Ireland are called lock so I'm gonna it's a lock okay and um, yeah looking across this beautiful body of water to the mountains I just I just love Killarney National Park it is so lovely down there apart from the midges as I'm sure you noticed um, this was uh, just a first test shot I was at the top of this rock just classic landscape 15 mil lens and it's kind of nice but it wasn't really dragging me in um, there's another one um, took a few came down a little bit and that's when I kind of settled on this composition with the water reeds let's ex turn the exposure up a bit so it's easier to see um, there we go so we've got this beautiful grass and uh, lead in the eye across we've got this rock that's pointing up towards these mountains as well and then the mountains and the beautiful clouds smattering of clouds so yeah so we took a few shots across the morning as the sun this is now between here and here you can see where I put the well Let's start with this one. This one, as you can see, is a quarter of a second. Then I put the six stop ND on and I was doing 10 second exposures and longer. And uh, then I popped on the, what would you, what would, what do we call it? Hard ND, hard grad ND. So it's got a hard line across it. So just the top of the sky now is reduced even further. Because we can see here the bottom is really dark and the top where the sky is a lot brighter so we've got a lot of dynamic range as you can see from the histogram and then i put the hard grad nd filter in bring down the exposure in the sky balance it out more and not that it really made much difference on the histogram but it does visually you can see that the foreground is a bit brighter now compared with the sky so then I was taking a series of pictures and we can start now to see the Sun coming up we can start to see that glow as it's hitting the top of the mountains there and the picture I settled on was this one and yeah I just it was the last one I took I really like this contrast with the mountains in the far distance having a beautiful sunlight on them and then as we come forward in the layers the lights not hitting these parts of the mountains so they're a lot darker compared and it gives it a really nice contrast now being I used the 15 mil lens which is so wide and I gotta say this lower is super sharp this was like f11 I believe I shot at this one annoying thing with the lower it doesn't convey certain data from the lens to the camera so any data from the lens say the aperture and uh, focal length aren't recorded in their raw file which is a bit annoying because sometimes it's useful information but anyway nice and sharp all the way through f11 I'm pretty sure I used uh, six seconds which was long enough to really make this lock nice and kind of uh, solid ice looking uh, but not too long that the clouds look too stretched out uh, let's compare a longer exposure see 25 seconds they look a bit kind of too fluffy and mushy so yeah so that was the right balance there um, now what are we going to do? We need to bring up the foreground. So let's do my classic. Um, I always call the bottom land for some reason. L. I'm going to do grad, which is the wrong way around. Spin it around, and uh, probably the light. That I 
let's see. Turn it off, and now I'm going to bring up the shadow and the exposure a little bit. I still want to give an essence that it's darker than the sky, but um, you know, you could you could really balance it out, look like this, and it's too fake. You want to give a, an essence of what it was actually like, and it was a bit darker. Uh, oh, a bit of clarity and structure. Just makes it pop a touch, sharpens it up a little bit more. And then with the sky, I'm going to leave the bottom for now. Might make some future adjustments. Then we're going to copy the mask from the bottom. Invert. So we've got the top there. And... I mean, it's well within the histogram. I don't really need to do much, I don't think. If anything, yeah, I could just bring down the exposure, exposure a touch. I want to make, I want to get a bit of contrast in these mountains. Um, yeah. Do it that way. Uh, sorry, I thought that was a spot. It's not. Um, oh, a bit of saturation as well. Let's not go too mad. And actually, this grass looks too green for my liking i think it kind of unbalances the the color um of the picture so if i go to the green in the hue saturation hsl and what we can do we can either adjust the hue could make it more kind of yellowy which could work or bring the saturation down which could work again or even make it a bit lighter I think what I might do is just bring it towards yellow a touch bring the saturation down and make it a bit darker I guess if I go the other way, I'm bringing it more towards the blue, that minty. Reset. Yeah, I think I prefer it that way. Let's do a before and after. So Alt, if I hold down Alt and hold that, you can see, and then let go, I can compare before and after with that particular color change. And you see how it goes from very quite, I mean, it's a lovely green, but it just doesn't suit the blue tones, cool blue tones in the picture. And by just changing it like that, it kind of just, blends in that much bit better which reminds me something I've done yet again is forget to just double check that white balance so here's where we have a creative choice because we can either choose white balance within part of the frame which is still in shade which is going to different produce a different white balance to it if I chose an area that's in uh, that area of light so for example if I choose this bit of rock here it's got a nice grey to it kind of 50% grey and then um, which is in the shade so that adds a, it seems to add like a, a green tint to it compare that to if I chose over here which is very blue uh, and let's reset it 
probably fine as it is. Yeah, I don't like that. Let's, let's leave the white balance as it is. Okay. Now, I feel like the only real other thing I need to do... I'll tell you what we'll do for the whole thing. Is just bring up the exposure. Half a stop. Let's go half a stop. And then it needs a crop. 4x5, I love a 4x5, and I feel like I want to crop in like this, because there is so much kind of empty blue sky, and I really want to focus the image, maybe make it bigger, yeah. what if I do it like this? The balance... That rule of thirds is coming into play. Do I want it more like this? I feel that is a great crop. Um, yeah, really, really like that. Uh, let's just play it. I wonder if a bit of it needs a bit of clarity just to make it pop. Or the whole see when I do this you notice how this there's this like band here that starts to get more defined the white and the blue kind of pushing against each other and it, it's quite it's very unnatural so I'm gonna maybe I want a bit of contrast in the sky or lessen it I want to bring it down a bit. I want to bring it up in the foreground, but less. Hmm. Okay, quite happy with that. I'm going to five star that. Now, these changes I've made uh, for the video, they're probably won't be any difference but down the line I might come back to this and go oh I need to want to tinker around a bit more it's not quite right is really what you want to do is edit it and then come back like the next day or a few hours later when your eyes have reset and you're looking at it fresh again because there will be something that you will notice that you want to tweak that perhaps uh, you didn't like okay so that was the last 15mm image, my favourite one out of that set, and now I put the 400mm on and I was just taking pot shots, basically, because there was this, as you can see here, just beautiful light and contrast, and I've chosen one or two to edit, but like this, actually, it's, it's a nice shot, this one, um, but I've decided not to edit it for Raw Wednesday, I may come back to it. Then I shot up into the mountains. This is one that I've chose to uh, take a picture of. Let's get rid of that bit of dirt. Really like that. Look at the con the cloud, the contrast here, that bit of light hitting this bit of mountain here, the edge of the mountain popping through the cloud, beautiful blue sky. There's a lot to like with that one. Continuing on. Oh, what have we done here? What's just happened? Oh, I accidentally unpressed zero. Oh no, who is that one? Again, contrast, shapes, lines. There's potential with that one. Uh, and this one was the other one I decided to edit for Raw Wednesday. I just love the trees and then the, the, the light, the contrast. I really, really like it. I've just got to turn this pump off. We have this pump 
and it randomly turns on and off so I fitted a smart plug to it and now I can turn the whole thing off it if it starts to be annoying like it just was anyway so I'm gonna edit these two now start with this one um, I'm gonna just start straight away with a crop Five by seven. It's just speaking to me. What do we think? That's kind of cool, isn't it? I think I, I kind of want to adjust it a bit more like that. think that's going to be more appropriate hmm honestly a lot 400 mil f11 125th second 150 just such beautiful beautiful light it's not the sharpest lens in the world but still um now we could go two ways. Well, we can go two ways. We can add contrast. Or we can soften it up. And I want to get a balance of that. There's a lot of natural contrast in this image. Let's we can stretch out the histogram and add bring back in that contrast. There we go, we've already added a lot of natural contrast just by stretching out the highlights and the shadows. Um, a bit of clarity, just to really bring out. Not too much, 20. A bit of structure for sharpness. Oh, my alarm's going off now. And I don't know if we want to do much more than that. Let's just check check the old white balance. We want to choose a nice bit of grey. Oh, that's gone green. There we go. But that looks a bit too... You gotta remember the morning light was hitting this mountain here. So compared to these bits of mountain which are in the shade, this is gonna look really, really kind of orangey red. In the future it might need some tweaking but I'm happy with that for now uh, now let's do this one straight away the exposure needs to come up um, push the contrast So again, we've created this contrast, really helped bring out this nice subtle bit of light hitting the mountain here. Check the white balance. That looks about right. Um, this actually might be good as black and white. 
let's have a look. We can go to the color tab, enable black and white. And what's good about this is we can adjust certain certain colors within the black and white to really lighten or dark them and that will help really kind of shape the the contrast and then let's do a crop again I think a 5 by 7 because it's quite a wide shot we want and add some clarity and structure love a bit of that make this kind of bit more obvious this is kind of our hero of the image these trees or the I mean the other thing I could do is really do it like this this might work better there we go we really helped Focus the eye and make these the hero of the image. Um, now I am going to change this to a four by five because it seemed a bit. There we go. I'm actually going to turn off black and white just to see. Actually, I like it like that. A bit of colour. This is a handy thing with having a camera with so many megapixels you can really crop in and it still looks an amazing an amazing shot so much detail and actually there's a nice i mean it's not perfectly sharp but there's still like um a depth of field blurriness compared to the trees there with the mountain behind now, do I want to add a little bit more? Cut. Yeah, I think that works. So there we go. That is the other two pictures. Now, then we got onto ICM. This was my first shot looking back up towards Torque Mountain with that mist rolling over it. And as you can see here, ISO 50, one second, F29 at 400 millimeters. And I was just kind of randomly shaking the camera around, just trial and error. Then I was trying to um, use the edge of the mountain because we had this contrast of light and dark, but that doesn't really work because it was too much of a contrast. And I was shooting into the water. Um, I think that's water again. I know it was. Uh, purposely putting the lens out of focus blurring it and then I was shooting back up towards them mountains where I was first aiming in the uh, pictures I just edited and then kind of moving it along the edge of the mountain and there was one or two I mean this is very subjective very subjective what I might like you may not like and vice versa hair yeah, sticking out there uh, so yeah, very subjective. So I chose this one. Let's get rid of that. I chose this one to edit, and we just all trial and error. This Here you can see the water, and then <laughs> there's like an outcrop of rock there, and you can kind of make out the image with that one there again. Then I was shoot. This is where I was shooting into them, uh, the clumps of grass in the water there. 
and this was the one that I showed on the video. We, we see this nice diagonal of dark and light and then the green clumps of grass speckled throughout. There's still like a, a, a sharpness to them because I was holding it <clears throat> I was holding it still so there's still that essence of sharpness but it's kind of got that Monet vibe about it as well. If you compare it to this one where I'm moving it around more and this one where I deep blurred it I would say that is my favourite out of all of them. And this last one here was just an outcrop of rock, which is quite interesting actually. This nice dark, dark shadows here, then the light blue with some interesting shape. It might be a nice one for some people. So let's edit these two pictures. Let's find that first one. Here we go. Now, what are we going to do? We can add contrast by stretching it out. See how I, as I move the black down, this moves the histogram down or the other way, brings it up. I'm stretching it to the point where it's, it's adding contrast but not clipping. And I think we're kind of limited that way. Although we can actually bring the highlight back, which as you see stretches out this top section. Um, contrast. Now what I've done here, because this is basically moving where this starts the black and the white where these points start whereas shadow and highlight it's it's taking this section and stretching it stretching it out so you can use these to combine almost um, what the curves gonna look like it's not too dissimilar to me creating a curve and then doing this and choosing how it curves from this starting point. Hmm. Now square. I always feel square looks good. Saturation. What I'm going to do is this blue, I just want to darken it up. Not purple. There we go. <clears throat> it was a bit too, I don't know, it's very subtle, very subjective thing. But anyway, let's go with that. I'm going to say that's done. There's not a lot, really. I can add a bit more. I could add some clarity to add some contrast and take it away. I'm going to leave it. Okay. 
So let's call that a five and then let's edit that last picture. That one. My Monet. What are we going to do? Bring the exposure up a touch. Do we want contrast? No. Saturation? No. Bring the highlight down because we're bringing black with the nice blue. There, but not too much. I like how it's got a pop to it. Mm, no, if anything, I think I want to make that dark. It's got a kind of a browniness to it, which I don't like. So what I could do is if we go to advanced, we can actually use the color picker, pick that horrible color, and then just remove it, which affects the whole image. No. This is where trial this is trial and error. Trial and error. Something not quite right is the white balance off. Hard to tell. <clears throat> Let me give it one more go. No, I think that is uh, for now fine. That edit, that's five. That so let's run through our five pictures. So here we go. Here's the first one. Like it, still like it. Looks really nice. That the eyes naturally led over to here, I find which is the goal this one love it got these nice lines and, it, and it, I feel like we're, the eye naturally kind of comes this way and this is like the hero coming out of the clouds then this one with the nice layers different layers of contrast and the trees of the hero there uh, then the ICM I like these three colors that kind of blend into each other this was the cloud that was going over the top of the mountain yeah I like that and then my Monet really like it so there we go 
thank you everyone for watching, for putting up with yet another Raw Wednesday and me faffing around with different sliders in Capture One. Pardon me. And uh, remember, this month's um, challenge is ICM, Intentional Camera Movement. Give it a go. As we can see from my kind of practices, perhaps it gives you some ideas of techniques or things to look for when uh, having a go at the ICM. I'm going to have keep having a go with the ICM this month and we'll see at the end of the month what I've kind of learned and um, might kind of look at other photographers that specialize in these fields and what they do uh, to give some inspiration as well. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good week. I haven't got my drone back yet. Uh, hopefully today it might turn up or tomorrow. But uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to actually properly using it for next week's vlog. So uh, in the meantime, ciao for now.